dragons did exist. Not the fire-breathing kind, no magic, no wings of leather and flame, but real animals, so massive, so alien, that they may have inspired the legends. They flew, they hunted, and some stood taller than a giraffe. Let me explain. Before birds ever flapped their wings, another lineage of reptiles took to the air. They soared over ancient oceans, stalked through prehistoric forests, and eventually grew to sizes so colossal that scientists thought that they couldn't possibly fly. But they did. This is the story of when terror took to the skies. This is when dragons ruled. Pterosaurs first appeared over 225 million years ago, during the late Triassic period. They were the first vertebrates in history to evolve powered flight, long before birds or bats. Their wings weren't built like a bird, however. Instead, a single elongated finger, their fourth, acted like a support beam. A leathery membrane stretched from this digit down to the ankle, or even the tail in some species, forming a highly efficient flight surface. They were covered in a fuzzy coating called pycnofibers, hair-like structures that helped with insulation and likely gave early pterosaurs a more mammalian or bird-like appearance than the lizard-like look many people still imagine today. Early species, like Dimorphodon, had big eyes, short snouts, and teeth well suited for catching fish and insects. Others, like Rampharynchus, sported long tails with diamond-shaped tips, perhaps for aerial stability. But it was in the Cretaceous period that things got truly wild. A bizarre group evolved, the Asdarkids. Named after a dragon from Persian mythology, Asdarkids were a family of advanced pterosaurs, long-necked, long-legged, and completely toothless. Unlike their fish-snatching cousins, these giants left the oceans behind and took to hunting the land. The name alone sounds mythic, Quetzalcoatlus Northrope, named after the Aztec feathered serpent god, and the creature lived up to it. It stood around 5 meters tall, as tall as a modern giraffe, and had an estimated wingspan of 10 to 11 meters, making it the largest known flying animal to ever exist. Some estimates even suggest wingspans of up to 12 meters, though the upper limits are still debated. Its bones were ultra lightweight and hollow, so light in fact that the entire skeleton may have weighed less than an average adult human. But make no mistake, this was no fragile glider. Quetzalcoatlus likely launched itself into the air using all four limbs in a quadrupedal vault, a technique similar to how modern bats take flight today. It pushed off with its hind legs and then used its massive arms like springs to fling itself skyward. Once airborne, it didn't flap constantly, it soared using thermals and wind currents, more like a vulture or an albatross. With huge wings and lightweight frame, it could potentially cruise for hundreds of kilometers in a single flight. Despite their dominance of the skies, Asdarkids weren't just aerial hunters. In fact, many paleontologists believe they spent a good deal of time on the land, stalking prey on foot. They had long, stiff necks supported by an unusual skeletal structure, where the vertebrae were fused and reinforced forming something like a bony suspension bridge. Their toothless, spear-like beaks weren't built for tearing flesh. Instead, they were likely used to pluck and gulp small animals whole. Think lizards, mammals, and even baby dinosaurs. Their limbs were proportioned for efficient walking, and fossilized trackways suggest they moved with surprising agility. On the ground, they walked on all fours, using their feet and their folded wings. In modern times, they may have behaved like stork-sized predators crossed with cranes and ground hornbills, Quiet, patient, deadly. If Quetzalcoatlus was the soaring titan, then Hatsagopteryx was the monster that walked. Discovered in Romania, Hatsagopteryx lived on an island known as Hatsag Island, a late Cretaceous ecosystem where most animals shrank due to limited space and resources, a phenomenon called island dwarfism. But Hatsagopteryx clearly didn't get the memo. It had a shorter, thicker neck than most Asdarkids, a broad skull and reinforced bones that suggest it was less of a glider and more of a brute. Some paleontologists believe that Hatsagopteryx was the apex predator of its island, preying on dwarf sauropods like Magyarosaurus, as well as other small animals unlucky enough to cross its path. This wasn't a scavenger, this was a grounded terror with wings. Now the big question, could something that big really fly? Early reconstructions painted as darkids as too massive for powered flight, clumsy gliders at best, but modern biomechanics say otherwise. Their skeletons were incredibly optimised hollow bones for lightness, huge muscle attachment points for launch, proportionally massive wing area, and a unique four-limbed takeoff mechanism. Studies by experts like Michael Habib have shown that as dark kids were not only capable of flight, but they were actually built for it. They weren't chasing mid-air prey like falcons, 
there were thermal surfers, using heat currents to stay aloft for hours, possibly even days, covering vast prehistoric landscapes in near silence. As Darkids and other pterosaur groups vanished during the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event about 66 million years ago, the same catastrophe that ended the reign of the non-avian dinosaurs. Why did no pterosaur lines survive, even though some birds still did? Possibly because pterosaurs laid fewer eggs, grew more slowly, and couldn't adapt as easily to the rapidly changing world. Unlike birds, which eventually evolved into the species we know today, pterosaurs left no descendants. They were a side branch, spectacular, but finite. For over 150 million years, pterosaurs ruled the skies. Some soared like ghouls, some hunted like herons, and some, like Quetzalcoatlus and Hatsagopteryx, were more myth than animal. They didn't breathe fire, and they didn't hoard gold, but they were real, and they were the closest thing the Earth has ever seen to dragons. This has been Prehistoric Fact Files. If you want more ancient monsters, fossil giants, and prehistoric legends, hit like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Comment below, would you rather be chased by a T-Rex or stalked by a Quetzalcoatlus from above? But until next time, stay curious.